how to choose the right surveillance camera for your facility. What parameters are important to consider to avoid regrets later? Hi, my name is Alex and this is People Systems Channel. In this video, I've gathered all the information you will need to know before buying a new security camera. Whether you're new to this world or you're looking to upgrade your current system, stick around till the end of this video to select the best camera for yourself and secure your facility. To understand which camera will work best for you, we first need to understand what are the three most common types of security cameras out there and how they work. For the first one, I am pretty sure you've seen it before. Literally, when you enter any store or office or any other commercial setting, yes, we're speaking about the dome cameras. Now, these were great in locations like the ones I mentioned above. Even it was that this is the typical usage, now installers are also using them for outdoors due to their discrete appearance and wide angle lens. Then we've got bullet cameras. They are specially designed for long distance viewing, hence why they are used to monitor large areas like parking lots or even building perimeters. Mostly it's an outdoors camera because, well, they often come with better proof technology. Now, lastly, we've got the turret security cameras. This one sets itself apart from the others by their design since they typically have a ball and socket joint that allows for easy adjustments of the camera's angles and orientation. They're way more compact and less obtrusive compared to the bullet cameras and have usually very good low light performance, which also on what's one of the important aspects to take into account when choosing the best camera for yourself. Of course, it doesn't stop there. And believe me, what I just mentioned are really the most basic types of cameras you can find. You'll be surprised with what technology has achieved in the latest years in the security world. And I will tell you about the coolest types of cameras to have, in my opinion, of course, more towards the end of the video. But there is one more thing to understand about cameras if you want to choose the right one for you, and it's the optic lens. Also, if you want to learn a little bit more about what other types of cameras there are, we're going to leave you a link down below so you could check that more deep into it later on. Now, to the optic lenses. How many lenses could there be? I mean, a camera just needs to provide an image and that's all, right? Well, yes, but different lenses give you different perspectives. And this can make a huge difference depending on where you will be installing these cameras. So to keep it simple, there are four main types of lenses. And by main, I mean the most commonly used ones of, of course. There are more, but I'll keep it short and simple, like I said before. So we've got fixed lenses, very focal lenses, fisheye lenses, and zoom lenses. Now, the fixed lenses have a set focal length meaning it cannot zoom in or out. Basically, they offer a single predetermined field of view. You could use these in places where the field of view is consistent and doesn't need adjusting, like entrances, small rooms, or even narrow hallways. The very focal lens, however, like the name suggests, provides the option to manually adjust the focal length of the lens. To give you an idea, a common lens adjustment could be anywhere from 2.8 millimeters to 12 millimeters. This way, when you adjust it, you can either capture more scene in a single frame or less depending on the position you want to have it for. Now, one of the perks of these type of lenses is that it can help reduce the number of cameras needed to cover a large area. So it can also be more budget friendly if you have a lot to cover. Now, if you're a sucker for details, you might wanna go for the zoom lens. Very similar to the very focal lens, but with two exceptions. Instead of having the adjust the focal length manually, these lenses are usually motorized. So you can adjust these focal lenses, of course, of the lens um, using an interface such as a joystick or from the video management software. And of course, secondly, the range of adjustment is much larger. For example, one camera model has a focal length adjustment from 4.3 millimeters to 129 millimeters, which is huge. This allows you to capture distant objects with high detail. Honestly, this is used more to monitor traffic so the cops can make sure we get our speeding tickets sent to our home all right. Uh, or if you have a very, very big piece of land, like a farm, then you can definitely make good use of this type of lens. 
We also got the fisheye lens, which is basically an exaggerated version of a wide angle lens. With the fisheye lens, you can oftentimes get a field of view anywhere from 180 degrees to 360 degrees with a distinctive curved image, but however, it may distort images at the edges, but it's useful in environments that require panoramic coverage, like public areas and big outlet malls. Don't worry, it does distort the images sometimes, but using the, you know, the according software to manipulate these cameras, you can get a very good image zooming in on certain corners. So that would be the fish islands. Since we're speaking about lenses and focal lengths, it is also very important to take into account the resolution you'd want your camera to record in. And this will directly depend on the amount of megapixels your lens can offer. It can go anywhere from two megapixels to even 20 megapixels, which is ultra high resolution. But the higher the resolution, the more storage you'll require. Let me break it down for you anyways. So at two megapixels, the camera will be recording in full HD or 1080p, which is generally sufficient for most basic surveillance needs. Now, if you want to push it a step further, you can go for four megapixel lens. This will provide a sharper image and improved clarity. Now at five megapixels, you can already have enough definition for things like face recognition or even license plate reading. And if you really want to go far, the best of the best, you can take an eight megapixel, which is basically 4K, offering excellent detail and clarity. This is particularly used to cover very large areas or for detailed forensic analysis. For example, for one day recording all 24 hours in high resolution, eight megapixel, you would need more than 200 gigabytes. So my recommendation to choose the right resolution for you will directly depend on your specific needs and the capability of your storage, but you'll be more than just fine with a four megapixel camera lens. Now, remember the zoom lens we mentioned earlier? Well, let me introduce you to one of my favorite types of cameras, just cause it reminds me of those Mission Impossible movies the pan and tilt zoom or PTZ camera for short. Since you can remotely control the camera, pan, tilt and zoom functions like the name says. So it's literally the typical cameras in movies that spies or burglars try to avoid because they got that killer moving range. Now I want to do a quick comparison before speaking about the cameras I got for you at the end of the video. Now, now that you know what a PTZ camera is and a static camera, which one should you go for? Now, before choosing, I'd like to mention something about the PTZ that we didn't before. There is a subtype to these cameras since yes, they come with their basic functions where they used to use joystick to control its functionality manually, but they are also smart PTZ cameras that are capable of automated tracking by following moving objects. They can detect unusual behaviors and alert the operators and some models can even integrate with other security systems to increase functionality. Now, why am I making this comparison exactly? Because these are opposite cameras. They're very different from one another, which will give you the best perspective on both sides of the coin. As if I were to compare other cameras, most are very similar to some extent, which in the end is what is confusing to you. So at the moment of deciding for one or the other, remember, I am working with the basics here. And then later in the video, I will explain more in detail and you know, then you'll be able to choose which camera you like the best. So this way you're going to be able to think better on your decision. So choosing between these two comes down to this static cameras are best for predictable and fixed coverage with less dynamic adjustments that in the end is way more cost effective and simpler to set up. Whereas for the PTZ cameras, these are best for environments where monitoring needs can change quickly. Hence why they provide such flexibility and advanced features, but it can also come at a higher cost and more complexity. Ultimately, the choice is yours, depending on what you need. Now that you've got the basic understanding of what kind of cameras are out there, what type of lenses work for what, Let's talk about these small but greatly game-changing characteristics and features that these other cameras have that have made security much more accessible to the general public. 
I am speaking about wireless cameras. And yes, they do exist, I'm not lying. Usually, to give you an idea, wireless cameras have connection to Wi-Fi without the use of an internet cable or even connection to LTE using SIM cards. But some of them do require a cable that connects to a power source to be on and they are still marketed as wireless. But on the other hand, there are 100% wireless camera models that connect to internet and are battery powered like this one here, meaning no cable for anything. It's really just unbox and install type of camera. The key perk of these cameras is not only the monitoring experience that you get directly through an app, but also the flexibility of installation, especially battery powered cameras. They give you leverage in remote locations such as cottages and construction sites. We actually did a review of this one right here not long ago, so you should go check it out. We are gonna leave you the link down below. Now, one thing to consider when looking out for a camera, and that is a very important feature, it would be the WDR or Wide Dynamic Range Parameter. Because it is great to have, but it would be crucial in environments where lighting conditions can vary, like entrances, with bright sunlight and darker interiors. Without the WDR, cameras can produce overexposed images in bright areas and underexposed ones in darker areas, leading to poor visibility and loss of detail, which is why it is so important using a WDR in cameras. Like that, they will be able to balance these extreme light conditions, ensuring you clearer and more detailed image. Since we spoke about wireless cameras that were connected to a network, there are also wired cameras that function the same way and we call these IP cameras. The only difference is that they connect via network cables, allowing for remote access, just like the wireless cameras, with the advantage that these provide higher resolution and greater flexibility when recording, with higher frames per second or FPS. And of course, they also have digital zoom. These compared to regular analog cameras, for example, are much less budget friendly. So depending on your business, say if you need high clarity images and good remote monitoring, you should go for an IP camera. But if you have a small installation and you have more of a budget conscious project, then go for an analog, which will record in AHD, HDTVI or HDCVI. And this camera will still do good. It'll just have a little bit of a lower resolution. Now for the cool part of the video. We spoke about almost everything except, drum roll please, artificial intelligence powered features, or in other words, AI cameras. I mean, of course, in today's world, I would be surprised if they didn't integrate smart features to cameras like face recognition, package detection, person detection, vehicle detection. That makes the difference from a security camera that provides basic video recording as opposed to the features I just mentioned. We did a few videos talking about how this whole system works for a brand called Ajax. They specialize in residential and commercial security systems, but smarter. They have a whole security ecosystem, including cameras that all together can detect intrusion, water leaks, fire hazards, remote socket controls, all powered by their own communication protocol. Ajax cameras have a built-in AI recognition feature, like the one that I've got here in my hand, that are quite interesting, like person, pet, and even vehicle detection. Ajax cameras with their AI analysis capabilities can distinguish different objects, enabling selective recording. This ensures only relevant events, such as a person entering a room or a car in a parking lot that are captured. All processing is done on camera, which reduces infrastructure load and saves more storage compared to traditional motion detectors that trigger based on pixel movement on the screen. Ajax AI expertise is homegrown and has no affiliations with questionable data sources. I'm telling you all of this to really give you an idea of how far technology can be taken. If you want to dive in deeper into that world, be sure to check out the video we did on their smart socket. I'll leave you the link down below. Ajax smart socket. Now, that's pretty much all you need to know about cameras. And if you watched the video till now, you deserve a little bonus. That is also very important to look out for when getting a perfect camera for your facility. So let me explain. 
So yes, it's important to have a great quality image and all, but where are you going to store all of this? See, there are three main options for this. Either you go for memory cards, an NVR or network video recorder, and cloud storage. Got these three options. They all do the same thing. They store data. How they do it, it's what makes the difference. Memory cards are ideal for standalone cameras that are easy to install and don't rely on internet connection. They're good for temporary or remote setups like the wireless cameras that we mentioned earlier. The only downside is that it has limited storage. So it will require more manual checkups and replacements. However, with an NVR, you kill two birds in one shot. You get substantially more storage capacity and you centralize the video storage from multiple cameras in one place. These are the most commonly used devices for IP cameras. Since you get features like continuous recording or even scheduled backups, it does require an initial setup, of course, that might be a bit more expensive and a good internet connection, to say the least. Now, for those of you that are not materialistic, you could go for cloud storage. This provides off-site storage that you can access this footage remotely all the time. You just need an internet connection and it typically does automated backups all by himself. So it does saves you the hassle of having to change a memory card every now and then and paying for a setup like the NVR. But since nothing is free in this life, they do usually charge you a subscription fee to have these services. So now that you know a little bit more about the types of security cameras out there, what type of features you should look out for, how can you store data and so on, I am pretty sure that you'll go on to find the right fit for you more confidently. I will, however, leave you some of my personal recommendations that you can go check out by yourself and make a decision. I hope this helped. Comment down below which camera did you end up going for. And if you have any questions, also let me know. Please be sure to like this video if you found this useful and subscribe if you'd like to see more content like this. My name is Alex with People Systems, signing off. See ya.